Hello, I'm Mixed Motor Mower Man and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a nice little lawnmower I've just a second picked up. Um, it's not native to the UK, these machines come from across the water over in New Zealand, funnily enough. This lawnmower, I watched it all year. All year I've been watching it and it was up for really, really good, strong money. The money that I would expect to sell it for, but it didn't sell. And it's been sat in this, in this fella's workshop shed for the entire year. Um, I've been watching it and watching it and watching it and then just the other day I see the price dropped a little tiny bit I thought that's there's a little bit of wriggle room in there for me I can get in there and do that uh, However, I put a sneaky little bid in on this on this mower and the bloke accepted it and boom I was down there picked it up within half an hour uh, The machine all runs uh, it has got a fault on it. That's why it's coming in today um, But do you know what it's a solid machine big powerful Briggs and Stratton flathead engine on it. It's a cylinder mower um, but it, when you um, start it up, you can start it up without the dead man in. So there's something wrong with the uh, with the, the dead man's connection, cable, switch, whatever it is. I've not worked on this type of cylinder mower before, so this is quite new to me. This has got a clutch on it, but it is a modern day um, a modern day um, cylinder mower. So I'm super happy. It looks really, really well built too. And as I say, it's done nothing. I know it's done nothing because it's been sat idle for an entire year. It hasn't been run up at all. I went down and said to a lady um, who um, helped sell it, because I think the gentleman is actually is wheelchair bound. Um, I said, does it run? She said, I don't know. Anyway, I put it on the choke, pull the cord, and boom, it fired straight up. A little bit of white smoke, but you'd expect that from sitting idle for a whole year. Started first pull, and it runs and does everything it should do, other than you just can't turn the machine off. And I think someone's adjusted the throttle to, to counteract that. That's what I think. Or it may just be a bit sticky. We should see. One other thing is my Mixed Mowers and Mower Man Merchandise Center um, is up and running, as you all know. But um, some of my friends in the USA have said it's costing too much money for to get a T-shirt for like £25 plus £25 shipping to get over to the US. So I have now gone international. Uh, international, a bit like Trotter's Independent Traders. We have now one store in Peckham and one store in Kansas. Um, so if you want to get some Mixed Mowers and Mower Man merchandise, there's a lot of M's, uh, hats, hoodies, t-shirts, um, masks, uh, shorts, and whatever, uh, cuddly toys, it's all on there, right? But you can go over now to the Mixed Mowers and Mower Man UK Centre, or the US Centre. So there you go. So now you can get your stuff over in the US at a fraction of the price. Um, so I've tried to save you a little bit on the shipping. I make a couple of dollars here and there on the items, but it's not a lot, I promise you. Um, I want you guys to have my t-shirts rather than forking out big lots of money and I make loads of pounds. That's not what it's about. So there is now a mixed mother merman UK and US. So go and check that out. So we'll look at this little cylinder lawnmower. That'd be cool. Um, get up on a bench. It's quite heavy. Have a look at this, what, the reason why it won't stop and start or, or won't, won't shut off. And then we'll go from there. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mother Mower Man, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I up another video. And it's completely free of charge to subscribe to my channel. Despite the fact it says subscribe, which normally means you have to pay something, but you don't, it's free. So make sure you do. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's get this lovely little cylinder mower up on the bench and um, see if we can't get it to stop and start when I ask it to. Boom, right, let's have a little wander. So I've just picked it up. It's here, look. It's a bit sunny. It's come towards the end of the day. I've been sat indoors waiting for to ring up a uh, paediatric doctor for Riley Boy, a specialist in sleep studies. But I picked myself up a Masport Olympic 400. Uh, these are a solid machine, guys. They're, they're, they're not um, they're not just a you know a typical like a quo car style machine. These are well built, these are solid. There's nothing. There's nothing sort of uh, fad about these. It comes with a lovely Briggs and Stratton uh, four and three quarters, 148 cc engine, and there's the old codes. Uh, codes are around the other side. Down here. Uh, make model and code is here. There it is. There. There's make model and code. So that tells you how old it is. Look, I'm uh, talking image for you. Can you see that? I think you can. There you go. So it says there. 0220 B1. So I think that is a 2020 model. So I ain't done a lot of work and I didn't pay a lot of money for this. As I say, I didn't pay a great deal. I paid good money, but there's plenty of room for, for, uh, 
for uh, wriggle room. So as you can see, make sure I'm in shot. So what it's actually doing is, is when you uh, go to start the machine up, okay, you can have this handle in the in the off position. Should be there to start it. When you let go of it, the machine still runs. So I think it could just be a cable problem, a bit sticky maybe, not quite sure. I don't think it's activating the, the kill switch. So let's get it up on a bench. Quick little fix, I'm hoping. Hopefully, hopefully I haven't been fiddled. I don't think I have. The bloke seemed very, very genuine. The roller looks lush, the cylinder looks good. As I say, it ain't done a lot of work. So let me clear the bench and we'll, um, we'll get it up on the old bench and try and do something with that uh, there dead man. Now, I've not worked on this type of a machine before. Uh, this is a new one to me, the uh, Mazports. I've done all the others pretty much, but not worked on a Mazport, and they are a bit different because they do actually have a clutch, a bell clutch in here, which is a bit different to how the other ones operate, all belt driven. So these actually have a clutch. Uh, but as you can see by the engine, it ain't done a lot. It ain't done a lot at all. So super, super happy. Let's get it up on the bench. Quick little sneak peek, see what we can't find. Okie dokie, let's have a little look. So the dead man's hands up the top. Follow the cable all the way down. Goes inside this little tiny box. So that's how I look in there. Little Phillips. We'll undo that. And come off. Another one at the back. So two Phillips to remove, and that should remove this outer casing. Now, as I say, you can see by the engine, guys, this has done nothing. How's that come off of there? Something like that. There you go. Uh, okay. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, let me show you what I found. So I think it's gonna be a really, really easy fix. So straight off the old bat. Do you want me to zoom in a touch just so you can see it? Okay, so we've been zoomed all the way in. Now, if I operate with dead man, right, up, up the top here, if I operate that, okay, there's me operating it, that. That literally just operates that little tiny uh, switch there, right? Now, you hear that noise? Click, here you hear it, you ready? There, you hear that noise? That's a micro switch. But if I operate the switch and then just let go of it, drop it, boom, right? That now makes connection with that little tiny bolt just there, right? But if I do it gently and just let it out gently, look, there's a gap. Now if I go there, well, there's a gap. If I look, now push it, see how much difference there is? So it's stopping about there, push it, and that's all it is. That's all it be. So I just think it's just a little tiny bit of oiling. It's nearly there. Now let's have a look here. I think someone might have adjusted that cable slightly too. I think they've wound it in or it's not been screwed all the way in. So what I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do to begin with, is I'm going to grab my BS Small Engines uh, lawnmower removal cable tool. Let me grab that. Now these are great, these are, these are fantastic. If I can get in with it, of course. So I've got my, my lawnmower cable tool. I'm going to run it into the cable. And over top, can I get in there? Oh, I can, this, not, this might be a design flaw, Brandon. I can't help it if it's not, can't show you at all off and it's what's well, entirely, there's a bolt in the way. Let me try and sneak in behind it. Cool, yeah, you can't. Oh, that's a shame, because that'd be brilliant in there. Well, I can't use Brandon's tool, because there's a nut right in the way here. So I'm just gonna try and spin that cable around and get a pair of long nose pliers. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna pinch. Let me show you what I'm trying to do. I couldn't get in with Brandon's tool because there's a nut just there. Can't get can't get in beside it. See, so it's not not Brandon's tool's fault. Two little tiny plungers here. All I'm gonna try and do is just literally. I can't do it one-handed, guys. So I'm gonna crimp those together. Boom, and then pull the cable out the back this way just to retract the cable. That's what I'm gonna do. All right. So let me just do that now. Get hold of that cable. Squeeze them in. Retract the cable out. God, it's not gonna be easy. Got one. It's just his brother don't want to come out. Oh, I don't want to break it because it's, it's darn near new cable. There it goes. 
All right, yeah, I see what's happened. It's actually come out of its housing. That's the thing. Let me try and remove this spring then. That will take some of this tension off. That will alleviate some tension for me. Yeah, this cable just wants screwing in. Look, let me show you. This cable here, look, it actually has come out of its housing. So what we've got to do is just screw that back in. Screw it all the way home. I think the other way. Screw it all the way as far as it go. Oh, is that in? I think we're nearly there. That's it. That's all the way home now. That wasn't all the way home. So now I can fit that little tiny spring back on. That might be an easy thing to do. I get a little tiny pair of uh, uh, little tiny pair of hose pipe clamp style pliers. And that should then allow me to get hold of that spring, have it round, have it on there. Boom. Right. So now let's have a look to see what difference that has made. So now I operate that switch. Let me zoom it in so you can see it. Right, I'm back. So now we can zoom it in and now this is a handle fully retracted open, fully closed, fully open. I'm just letting go of that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not just dropping it, it's just closing off, off its own action itself, just like that, you see? So now it doesn't move. I'm really gentle with it. That's where the handle stops, push it forward, nothing. So now it's gonna make connection all the time. So that will now stop stop my um my machine as and when I want it to. The only problem is of course is that somebody I believe has adjusted the carburetor with that there. See how that's been bent, look. See that? That's been bent. That's to stop the idle. So that shouldn't be like that. That should have a bit more oomph to it. So what I'm gonna do is when I get it running, I'm gonna, I'll come back to that in a minute. I'm just going to bend that little tiny tab that way towards the front, just to get a bit more, a bit more beans when um, when it's on idle. Because at the moment it won't, it will not idle. And I think someone's had a little tiny fiddle with that. So it could just be a really, really simple little thing. I can put the cover back on here, and I'm super happy with that. I've, I thought maybe it wanted a bit more work, but you know. As I say, this has done nothing, absolutely zilch from day one. And I'm super happy to have it. It's a 16 inch, so it's in between the 14 and the 17 Atcos and Alex. So it's a good size, plenty of weight behind it. Machine. So now uh, we should be good. Now the only thing I do question I do have is is that. I don't know. I haven't, look, I haven't looked it up yet, but these cylinders, you um, Aussie boys, might, or you um, New Zealand boys and girls might know, this cylinder spins from the second I start the machine up. Now, I'm not sure it does that or doesn't, or does it only engage when you put the drive in or what? Let me know, please. I don't know. Should it spin all the time um, from a minute get go, or should it stop spinning and only engage when you engage the drive? So let me know about that, please, because I'm not quite sure but I would like to know. So, uh, I need a pair of long nose pliers just to adjust this, um, this tick over a bit later on. I'll do that uh, once I get the machine outside and fired up. And hopefully this time it will now stop and start as um, and when I ask it to. So, could be a real quick little video. Okie dokie. So now I want the machine to start and stop when I ask it to. Let me just get a, a bale for it, a, a bale strap, just so I can turn the, um, Keep the machine running. Now, there's a question. I had some, but now I've moved a lot of stuff about in my workshop. And they're right down the other end, all the way down here. To move them, I could have been down there. <coughs> my shed's filling up, people, ready for winter. So, got a pair of long nose pliers, and I've got a little bale clamp just to bale the machine up. 
So now I want the machine to stop and start when I ask it to. So choke the machine, bit of throttle, which I think is, throttle is that way. And we'll give that a start and then, first of all, stop and start it. And then secondly, um, adjust the throttle. Pull the handle in, it won't start without the handle, just fix that. Lovely. So will it start without the bail-in? No, bail-in. Right, so now I'm going to adjust the throttle. If I, if I tip that throttle all the way back, it, um, it will stall, but I've got to just adjust it slightly. So in here, oh, it's gonna stall on me. I'm gonna bend that arm forward a touch, when I showed you, just to see what that does. And hopefully, that will now, now idle. Bit of choke, it's cold still. Wants a bit more yet. It might want a bit of carburetor clean as well yet, but that throttle was bent all the way back, which is doing it no favours. It may want a little bit, a little bit of work. say that cylinder is running all the time so let's take a bit of a run see what it does man that's a sharp cylinder keep putting grass in the box baby Check that out. So she's cutting already. I think it wants a bit of a grease up as well. I've got to check the oil and all that sort of good stuff. But do you know what? Super, super happy with that. One um, Mazport Olympic 400, all mine. It's a serious bit of kit, people. Look at that, look. See that line? You see that? Man, she's cutting already. That's a serious line. That's a cracking little machine. I like that a lot. So there you go. What do you think of my, uh, my new Mazport? Olympic 400, I'd like to have a big 20 inch, that'd be lush. So that's one for you guys over there that follow me over in New Zealand. If you can give me a bit of information in regards to the cylinder, should it spin all the time or not, or do I have a bit of a clutch problem, let me know, because I need to be educated. And then we go from there. So all in all, yeah, I'm super happy, baby. So there you go, one Mazport um, Olympic 400, now all up and running, stopping, starting, and cutting, exactly as it should do. Just let me know about that cylinder, please, guys. 
If you do know or not, I've, I've got a feeling they may run all the time, but I haven't found anything that says that it shouldn't. But now the uh, the dead man's handle or the operator handle uh, is now working. It stops and starts exactly what it should do. But someone has definitely been fiddling because that carburetor arm was just slightly adjusted. Now it does feel when you shut the throttle, throttle right off, it also kills the engine as well. So I'm not sure if that's a thing, if that actually operates the switch as well, but I may have to take the carburetor off to get a bit of a clean because it has been sat for a year, that I do know. But overall, I'm super, super happy. If you want to leave me a comment down below in the comment section to give a bit of information about those um, Maz ports, I think they're a fantastic bit of kit. They are really well built well as well. I really do like it a lot. Um, well built, and it looks to be some kind of commercial grade too. It's, it's all there, you know what I mean? It's a real nice machine, and they don't go for cheap money brand new. Trust me, I had a little look at them. If this is your first time I'm watching Mixed Muzz and Mer Man, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Muzz very, very soon, but until then, people, much more importantly, take it easy.